Welcome back to Vintage Diecast Restoration. In this week's detour, my wife and I took our kids into the Great Train Expo as it came into Kansas City. A lot of really cool uh, miniatures and models, HO scale, N scale, G scale, just about any kind of uh, train related um, paraphernalia that, that you can think of. Uh, saw some really incredibly cool layouts and some great models. Um, the kids absolutely loved it. And I uh, was actually surprised uh, that about half of the show was a, a vendor hall um, that had different booths, uh, people that were buying and selling models and trains and track and different accessories and kits and parts and stuff. And uh, several of the booths were uh, toy dealers. And, of course, if I'm there, I'm going to look for some vintage matchbox as well. And uh, came up with a couple good finds. You'll see them later in the video here. Uh, but I uh, did want to take a few minutes to talk about this. Uh, the, the amusement park kind of layout here um, is absolutely incredible. You see the little uh, inner tube going up the... the shoot there. Uh, this was a real water layout, so the, the water actually circulated, the little inner tubes floated down. Um, all of the, the rides were operable, so the bumper cars actually bumped around into each other, the little zipper uh, Ferris wheel looking thing actually uh, ran and, and turned. And um, There were three or four different roller coasters uh, that all had uh, functioning track and cars. Um, just really incredible detail uh, on this series of models. And I think these were all done by the same gentleman. Um, he actually had these wired into little switches uh, that sat out on the, the boundary rope that ran around so uh, the kids could push a button and actually make the, the lift mechanism run on the roller coasters. So really, really cool, very detailed. I was just completely blown away. Uh, the little wooden roller coaster there you see in the back uh, appears to be all made out of matchsticks. So uh, it's Craig Adams. Uh, I don't know him. Um, don't know where he's from or what, what club he's in, but uh, was really impressed with his layout and just the attention to detail on all of it. Just absolutely incredible. We walked around uh, most of the show. They had a lot of different trade clubs, uh, some from uh, up near Lincoln, Nebraska, several in the Kansas City area, uh, a couple from uh, down south, Wichita, and Oklahoma areas as well. Um, and these are all just clubs of, of people, model train enthusiasts, they get together and uh, they each bring a section of the layout and they set them all up together and, and display the trains over the weekend. I thought this model was really cool, this little drive-in theater. Um, with all the, the cars kind of around it, a little diorama looking thing with the, um, the screen running. Uh, this is uh, Northeast Railroad, uh, Kansas Railroaders, Model Railroaders Association. Um, so again, another, another club, another group. Really amazing, just attention to detail, looking at the, the snow and the wrinkles and the rocks and just how realistic all this was. I uh, just felt like these were really, really awesome. What do you think, Mac? Is that pretty cool? Macklin, is that pretty cool? Yeah. 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 You like the trains? I like it too. You like it too? Yeah. Especially the rainbow car. That's pretty wild.
Here comes another one, Mac. Here it is. It's a long one. You watching, buddy? It's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. Hey, Dad, there's even some spray paint. I know. So about half of the uh, exhibit hall was uh, set up with different vendor booths um, and just about anything model railroading related that you can imagine was there. Uh, ran into a couple of these different booths that just had sort of grab boxes, sort of job lots of different model railroading um, models uh, and little cars and things to put on your, uh, your train layouts. I, I've had some good luck in the past uh, buying some really good condition uh, original Moko Lesnies that were used as uh, vehicle models on a train layout. And it's a great thing because uh, they were never played with. They were, they were really well preserved. And, you know, somebody put them on their display and they sat there for 40 or 50 years. And so um, I, I've always looked at different train stuff as a possible source for uh, some good matchbox models and was hoping that I'd get lucky uh, here. And uh, I did. As you can see, just right here in this one little box, right right there is a really nice condition um, little bulldozer uh, I, don't, I think that might be a super fast could be later but it, it's definitely a, a Lesney model um, here's another one and that that's pretty sad shape uh, a lot of broken missing pieces on it uh, definitely not worth four dollars um, a couple of these other ones in here I recognize uh, from different HO scale uh, models and things like that but Always worth a look. Uh, the VWs seem to just jump out at me now. Uh, now that I, I picked that as my channel logo, I, I seem to find them everywhere. Um, I'm always keeping an eye out when I might find something I can customize. And uh, I always, of course, keep an eye open for some of the, some of the other stuff too, the things I might not uh, collect, some of the Dinky or Corgi or uh, some of the other variations and brands. But... Uh, it's always difficult uh, at these shows. You know, a lot of these are made specifically for train layouts. Um, and so the, the Matchbox, it's, it's definitely a, an oddball uh, that you find one here and there. Um, a lot of these are models that are, are made just for the, the train displays. And uh, you can see they've got some new ones too, along with all the little people, lampposts, you know, any sort of detailing thing you can find. But... Uh, I, I knew I, if I kept my eyes peeled, I, I might get lucky and uh, find a couple uh, loose models here and there. Look at all those cars. And the buildings. Yeah, all the buildings above. Look at all the tractors. Mike, you see Matchbox in there? I do So this booth was absolutely incredible. He had Dinky, he had Matchbox, uh, some Corgis, uh, some Blue Box models, just all sorts of stuff. Um, any, anything die-cast and toy related, it seemed like he had. A uh, couple box models. Pricing on, on all of this stuff was really really high I mean very very inflated um, but he had some signs up on his booth that said uh, you know let's make a deal and shoot me an offer and so I thought well you know let me pick through um, I, I don't need all of these and uh, I certainly am at a point in my collection where I can be somewhat discerning in uh, what I want to uh, acquire still um, so I'm really only looking for either great restoration candidates, you know, something that I can, can restore um, and is in really rough shape, or I'm looking for something that is almost immaculate original condition that I want to keep as a, an original model. So we are back from the train show, and I wanted to show you some of my loot. 
So for starters, I found this little model. I believe this is a super fast uh, little case tractor. Um, it says Matchbox Series number 16. Um, the thing I thought was really cool about this one, I paid $2 for it, uh, which is right the price range of where I like to find these models. And you can see this is pretty dirty, but as far as the paint goes, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this model. Um, I think once I get it cleaned up with soap and water, this is going to be a, a near mint model. And it has intact both original rubber treads, which I'd end up paying more than two bucks just for a set of treads. So I feel like I got a really good deal on this one. Uh, it also had the original cab, and a lot of these, when I find them, I find them like this. They're missing the cab because these were made to be removable, and kids removed them. So uh, that was my first find. Um, and this I found just in a, a grab box of a whole bunch of just loose cars, loose die cast. Uh, this was the only decent model that was in there. There were a couple other uh, Lesney models, but most of them were in pretty sad shape. And this one was just great, so well worth the $2. Uh, the next little booth that I went to, and you probably saw some of this in the video, he had quite a few models in bags. And so the price tags that are on these are not what I paid. Um, and that's, that's uh, one of the tips that I found is in doing these things. When I, when I collect them, um, or when I find somebody that's got a, a collection, a whole bunch of cars, buying in bulk, I can usually get a better price. So... Uh, this first one here, he had marked at $25. Um, and if you look at this bus, this little Greyhound bus here, this is the number uh, 66 uh, coach, they called it. This thing is mint. It is perfect. There is nothing wrong with this. There's not a scratch anywhere in the paint. The glass is nice and clear. All the original decals are there one little spot right there on the decal but honestly I think that's probably from the factory that way um, sometimes you know you can see here how that decal is overlapping that rail now if this had seen any playtime at all you know all those high edges would have wore right through that decal so uh, this is as close as you're gonna get to mint not perfect still um, remember when it's too perfect it's probably a restoration but uh, I think this is an unplayed with uh, number 66 coach uh, Greyhound bus. Um, and I think I paid $10 for this, not $25. So very good find there. A couple of these other models. The little Fordson tractor here. He had $10 on this. Um, I think with the little red paint here on the bottom missing the wheels... Uh, I was able to get this one for $4. Uh, it does have some play wear on the top, a little chip on the seat there, but it's an intact model, and it's definitely better than some of the other uh, copies of this I have. Look at the plastic on the wheels. Still really shiny. So, again, not perfect, but remarkable shape um, overall. And for $4, I'll, I'll buy that model all day long. So, another really good find there. On this little guy, for those of you that collect know, this is one of the older models. This is, uh, I think it's an, what do they call it, MGA sports car. Yeah. That's a number 19. Um, it is missing the driver in the seat, and I know that I can get those reproduction. Paint is not great, but for a model as old as this is, it's really not too bad either. Overall, um, you know, nice little piece and uh, pretty pretty good shape. Uh, he had $30 on this. I think I paid $10 for this model. Um, altogether, I, I shot him one deal for all these uh, bagged models. Um, and I paid $45 for the whole whole set. So, this little one here, got a good price on this because he knew it was a repaint. 
So if you look at this, this is a Jaguar, I think, yeah, a Jaguar XK140, number 32. Um, so the base, you can see it's got a little paint on it. Uh, the wheels are uh, tough to tell. I think these are gray plastic wheels, um, but you can see even the wheels are painted on this. The ends of the axles are painted there. And uh, of course, the, the roof. Um, I, originally, when I picked this up, I thought this was probably a white model that somebody had just painted the blue on the roof. And I thought, well, I might be able to strip that off and get back to the original white. And when I got it home and I started going through it, I saw the little hints of red. So uh, I think that this was a red Jaguar, um, or maybe it was a white Jaguar that got painted red and then got painted white with the blue roof. Not, not for certain on that, but uh, again, this is a rarer car. It's an older car. Usually these uh, fetch a uh, very high price and was able to pick this one up fairly cheap. Um, and then got one more there. Which, here's my last one. This was the last one I got from him, uh, another Jaguar, another overpaint model. Uh, you can see base is pretty well play worn. Uh, the top obviously has been painted over. What intrigued me about this was I think that the original color on this was not red. Um, all the little areas where the paint is kind of coming loose or scratched loose, I'm seeing like a gray silver underneath. So I'm not really sure. Uh, this will be one for sure that I will restore. I've done one of these already, so it may be a while till I get to this. I don't like to repeat models on the channel. I'd rather show you guys new models, new stuff that I haven't done before. But uh, I'm really anxious to see uh, what what the story is with this car. And once I get it apart, if I can tell what the uh, original color was on this, uh, kind of kind of intriguing. Um, but again. For all of these models, I paid $45, and if I was on eBay or something similar to that, I probably would have paid $45 just, just for this one here. Um, and out of all the prices, this was actually one of the cheaper ones, one of the ones that he uh, had kind of valued a little bit less than these other ones, but very excited to get the, I'm excited to get all of them, but uh, this was definitely my my big find from that seller. Um, and then the very last booth that I went to, I noticed that he had a lot of non-train stuff. And so I thought, well, you know, let me go check it out and see what all is there. And uh, way down in one, the bottom of one box, um, he had three of these original boxed Moco Lesney models. Um, now this one was a, a box only, um, and this box you can see it's got a few little bends, it's got some tears on the end flap here, some kind of a little goober that stuck to the front, uh, I'm not sure what that is, a little loss on the artwork there. Uh, the other side is actually in much better shape, pretty much a perfect lithograph on there. Um, and this, like I said, this was just a box only, but uh, has all of the end flaps. And so this is a real easy box restoration for me. I don't have to do much, but uh, fix these little tears on the end. And then really, I think, just clean and press everything. I may attempt to tackle whatever this little goober is here uh, just to see if that's an adhesive or something I can get to let loose. I don't really want to damage um, the box underneath it. And in this case, I may end up if that doesn't come off easily, I may just leave it alone and live with it, whatever it is. Um, but I was really excited to get this because I just finished a restoration of a number 11, uh, one of the smaller uh, first issuance, yellow tankers. Um, and if that hasn't posted to the channel yet, it'll post in the next couple of weeks or so. Uh, but I didn't have a box for it, and this one came up, and it was a box only, which... For those of you that collect, you know, it's real easy to find the models. When you start collecting boxes, everybody has a box with a model in it, so you got to buy both. Um, so to find just a box only was a really good find for me on that one. 
And then this one I am very, very excited about. Uh, this is probably my most valuable purchase of the day. Um, you can see this box is perfect. There's not a crease on it. Um, there's absolutely nothing that I can find fault with in this at all. It looks brand spanking new. And what's better than a mint condition box than a mint condition model to go with that box. So take this out very, very carefully here. So I have one of these in my collection and it is in very, very good shape. It's a very, uh, very nice copy of this model. Um, I'm not sure of all the variations on this. I need to go back and, and do a little consulting on my uh, collector's books and really see um, the differences, if there were any, between these models. But as you can see, this little gem is perfect. Um, you look at the wheels, there's not anywhere. You can see the casting seams on the wheels. The paint on this is almost perfect. Um, I think any of the wear that I'm seeing on the paint would have come just from it rattling around inside the box. You can see the driver, a um, little orange coming through there. Again, I don't know if that maybe came that way from the factory. Um, the paint isn't perfect around that driver, but you know, the, the Lesney ladies only had a few minutes to paint these as they were coming down the line. And uh, this is just a really nice little piece. Uh, super, super excited to find this one. Um, so let me know. Let me know what you think. How did I do at the train show here? Uh, pricing on these for the box, this empty box, I gave uh, $15 just because, you know, I had the model. I've been looking for it for a while. It paid up. Usually I'll only go to about $10 on a box, but I did $15 on this one. Just because it is older, it is harder to find. It's the, the MoCo Lesney. Um, and for this mint condition box model, I gave 35 bucks for the box and the model. Um, and so I, I think those were both uh, fair prices, you know, a little bit below market value. Um, the guy was willing to work with me a little bit just because uh, he was into trains and not into Matchbox. Um, but uh, let me know what you think. How did I do? Uh, as always, uh, if you enjoy this video, give me a like. If you want to keep up with this and all of our future videos, click that subscribe button and ring the bell so you get notified when a new video goes live. And as always, join me next week for another Vintage Diecast Restoration.